And this series, I'm going to be focusing on some advanced movements that I hope you enjoy and you can apply in your playing. But right before I get to that, I wanted to dedicate this first video on essential movements that I believe everyone should know. And it's a good foundation to learning even more advanced movements because it builds um, foundation in theory and concepts that Corey Henry, Alan Merville, Bar Orr, um, just to name a few are, are doing and they're playing. I do want to warn you though in advance that this video is going to have a lot of information and the reason being is because I'm going to be going through each number of the skill degree and I'm going to be showing you movements for each one. Um, it's going to be a lot of information but the good thing is that you can pause and slow the video down um, to your pace. If you have any questions um, feel free to message me on IG or ask Aaron Barbosa so you um, understand all the concept in this video. So let's go ahead and get started with the first scale degree. So we're gonna start on the first scale degree and for this video we're gonna be in the key of D. And I'm gonna show you essential movements that I believe everyone should know um, on this first scale degree. This first one is a very traditional one and it goes like this. Again. What I'm doing with this movement is I have the octave, so I have the tonic note or the first scale degree, so I have D. I'm adding the major seven to give dissonance, and then I have the five. And then after this, what I'm doing is I'm actually going up from the six and four to the seven and the five. So the six B, the four is G. I have the six C sharp and then the A. And then to resolve, I have the four and the two. And then I bring this up a full step to the five and the three, which would be A and F sharp. So slowly all together goes. And notice I'm hitting the octaves, the outside octaves first before I do the movement um, inside. All right, so the next movement, um, it's more contemporary, um, and it's actually a, a lot less than that one, and it goes like this. Again, I'm hitting those octaves outside, if you notice, and it goes. So I have the, the D on the outside, or the one, and then I'm moving the five and the three up to the six and four, and I'm resolving the same way with the four and two up to the five and the three. And you don't have to do the movement um, com like full or complete all the time. Um, I find myself sometimes even just doing half of that movement. For example, if we do a song like Waymaker um, and we apply it within that song, it would sound something like this. If I did the full movement, um, it would sound like this. All right, so the final one is uh, more of a contemporary one, and it's also a gospel movement. And this movement actually came from David Davis, and it sounds like this. Again. So it's a very modern gospel movement um, and it's a different approach. So if you wanna do something different, um, this is something that you would do. So I'm starting off on the F and throughout this whole movement, something I actually wanna point out is I always have the root on top um, or whatever key I'm in. So don't never lose that. Uh, so you just know where you're at. And I'm starting off on the F and what I'm doing on the left hand is just an F and the C. On the right hand, I'm doing a G to the A, and I have the one on top. And then I move this a whole step down. So I have the E flat, B flat, and the G. That gives me like an E flat major seven. So I have, and then I go to the flat seven of D, which would be C. 
and G on the left hand. And I have E on the right hand, again all over the D. And then I do a single note of G to resolve on the one, which is D, A, and F sharp. So I'm gonna do it slowly again. So I hope these three essential movements on the one help and expand your playing. So let's move on to the second scale degree. Hey guys, so now we're on the second scale degree. In this case, it'll be E in the key of D. And I'm gonna show you two movements that you can do on the two dominant. Um, in gospel, a lot of times, instead of just doing a minor chord, they'll go to the dominant. So the chord that I'm doing is just an E, D, A flat, D and F sharp. And you can do these movements um, in songs or in talk music. And this first movement is by Corey Henry, and it's actually one of my favorite ones, and it goes like this. Over the two. So we're gonna do a C sharp, an F, and an A sharp. And we're gonna walk that up a half step to a D, F sharp, and B. And then we're actually gonna go um, on the left hand, A flat to an A, and on the right hand, we're gonna twing the D to the, the C to the D, and we have the F sharp on top. And we bring this chord down to an A flat, C sharp, and E. So now you have something like this back and forth with those two chords. The second one is by Eddie Brown, and he does that again over the two dominant, and he goes again. And what he's doing, he's keeping the C sharp, uh, sorry, the C sharp on top, and he's twanging from the F sharp to the G sharp on the right hand, and then on the left hand, he's twinging from the D to the E, and he's also doing that back and forth. So I'm gonna use the song, Oh Give Thanks, as an example to apply these movements, but you don't have to do it in a praise song. You can apply this in worship, and also in talk music. I'm using Oh Give Thanks because I know that in that song, we go to the two dominant. So let's go ahead and apply it. It could sound something like this. So that's just an example, um, but try to get creative with it and see where you can apply these movements. But let's move on to the next scale degree. All right guys, so now we're on the third scale degree. In this case, we'll be in F sharp since we're in the key of D. But right before I show you these, these movements, I wanna emphasize something very important. So um, these movements are used to go to a minor chord. So you don't just have to learn them on the third scale degree to go to the sixth minor. I encourage you to learn these on the sixth scale degree to go to the two minor. And that way you can use these movements um, either going to the sixth minor or the two minor um, or any minor chord. So um, let's start off with this first movement. It's by Bart Orr. And the movement goes like this. Again. So basically what he's doing on the third scale degree, he's walking up the scale. And then on the left hand, he's walking down. So when he puts it together, it goes on the right hand, I do the, the F sharp. And then when I go up to the um, A flat, I'm hitting the F. And then I'm doing the B flat and the E, the B and the D. I'm doing um, an octave of the C sharps. And then when I'm gonna get to that D, I'm doing a chord. And I'm basically doing a um, diminished seven chord, but I'm bringing the five down. And then I bring the left hand down a half step, and I bring the right hand up a whole step. So you have something like this. So again, it goes. go to the sixth minor. 
All right, guys, so this next movement is also by Bart Orr, and it's a diminished movement that goes um, to the six minor, and it goes something like this. So basically what he's doing is he's taking that um, diminished chord, in this case, this diminished chord, and he's doing that same concept that he did on the previous one, where he drops the five of that diminished seven down to the bottom. So again, you have your diminished seven chord, you have the one, minor third, minor five, and the double flat, and you drop the five of the diminished chord. And then you get this shape, and you can either go up chromatically or down chromatically to get to your minor. In this movement, you notice that Bar Or actually did a combination of that. So he goes up chromatically three times, and then he goes down chromatically once. And when he gets to the diminished uh, chord that he wants, he just does an inversion of that same chord, and then he lands on his six. So this movement is very important, so I, I hope that you guys learn this again, not only on the third scale degree, but on the sixth scale degree. All right, guys, so now we're on the fourth scale degree. And a lot of times in, in gospel, whether it's hymn or worship, you, you see a lot of people going to the four minor. So I'm just going to show you different ways to do that four minor. And I'm also going to show you how to resolve that four minor. So um, on the left hand throughout these movements, I'm going to be doing this voicing. It's over the four and it's an E, B flat and D. Um, so the first way you can do it, the most common way is going something like this. I'm twinging that G to the A and then I'm doing that C and then I resolve it to the G and the B flat all over this chord so it goes or you can just do the tritone the E and the B flat and do the full chord which is a uh, E A and C resolve to the D G and B flat Another way that I see um, a lot of people uh, do this is by doing a melody. Um, I actually heard Kenny Cedillo do this melody and I really liked it. And it goes like this. Again. And all he did was he rolled the B flat to the C. And then he goes back to the B flat and then he does G to the A and ends on that G. So, so that's just the way to do it. Um, Eddie Brown did a, a different type of melody and he went something like this. So again. Same chord on the left hand and he went from the F sharp to the G, B flat, to the A, to the A flat, to the C, then he twings that G to the A and rolls down from the B flat to the G. So you can either do this, you can do this, melodies, there's so many different ways to do it. Um, there's also a scale that a lot of people do. So it's based off of like G, F sharp, E, D, C, B flat, A and G. Um, so you can mess with that scale. And I'm just showing you this so it can expand your creativity. You don't have to do um, these exact movements on the four. Um, because on the four minor, you can do so many things. These are just kind of like little things that can help you um, push you in the right direction that a lot of people do. But something important I wanna show you, anytime you do a four minor, one of my favorite ways to resolve it um, that I heard um, Alan Merville do was something like this. So basically he did a drop two, he got that G minor chord and he keeps the G and the D on top and he brings the B flat down he actually is rolling that F sharp to the G. And then he goes. He does the G on the 
left hand, he has the E and the B flat on the right hand. And then he's resolving the one over the five. So whatever movement you do, that's a good way to resolve um, and then you end it. So I hope this helps um, give you some different options um, during worship, talk music, anytime you go to the four minor. So let's move on to the next scale degree. So now we're on the fifth scale degree. So in this case it's A, since we're in the key of D. And I'm gonna show you a couple of different movements on the five. So the first one is gonna be, so it's a very basic one. Um, I have the five and the one. And um, on the inside of that movement, I have the four chord. So I have the D, J, and B, and that's in the second inversion. And then I bring the D and the B down a half step, so. And I'm swinging that A to that B down a half step, and then I resolve to the one. One more time. So for those who have been doing something similar or that movement, um, a more complex way to do it, um, I've heard David Davis do it like this. I wouldn't do it all the time, but if you just want to throw something um, out there, it would be something like this. So on the left, hand, the left hand, I'm doing the A, F sharp, and the G. So it's a lot of dissonance with that B. And then he resolves it by going to the C sharp. He keeps the dominant seven or that G, B flat, C, and E. So again, it goes one last time. And then you resolve. Another movement on the five uh, that you hear a lot that I think it's very essential to know goes like this. One more time. And basically what I'm doing is I have the five and on the, um, I have the inner movement, it's the D, G, and B. And I'm walking that up to the A Chord, so the E, A, F sharp, and then I get to um, that B minor, F sharp, B and D, and then I keep that F sharp and I'm doing like a G major seven, so G, A, B, D, and F sharp. So, and then how I'm resolving, I do the B flat and the E flat, and then I go to the E, and then to the F sharp. You don't have to do that ending movement. This is the most important thing about it. You can resolve with any chord that you usually do on the on the five, or you could just stay there actually, leave it suspended, and then just resolve it. Um, another movement you hear this a lot on in hymns and in gospel uh, songs. It goes like this. So it's like an alternate five chord and then resolve so over the five you're gonna do a D E G and B and then um, you're gonna go to the E G B and D and then over the five you're gonna do the that dominant of that five and the three and then you're gonna do the F sharp you're gonna do that flat nine of the five chord, so that B flat, and then the three. So you have, and resolve. And I know it's a lot, um, so I'm kind of going for those who um, are advanced, just kind of going through them, giving some ideas. Uh, but the good thing about this is that you can always rewind and just go over them again. And these are all different movements over the five um, that you can use and apply in your playing. A lot of these are just usually to end um, or they're to resolve to the to back to the one. So this next movement is based off the five, one, four progression. And I learned this movement from Kenny uh, Cedillo and it goes like this. And um, basically what he's doing, um, he's on the right hand, he's going from the one chord to the two chord. So he's starting off on the second inversion of that one chord, 
second inversion of the two chord. Then he goes to root position for the one chord, the two chord. And then he goes to the um, second, I mean the first inversion for that minor chord. And then the first inversion for the one chord. So when he gets to this one, he's twanging that A to the B and then back to the root. So again, second inversion, root, first inversion, and he's going back and forth, then to the four. And that's all over the five. I'm doing the five, um, so the A, the E, and the G. And then when I get to this one, I'm doing the dominant, so the one, the three, and the dominant seven to the four. Another way to do this, um, I heard uh, Nate Benya do this a lot, and he does a, more of a melody kind of thing. He goes, I'm still doing the same on the left hand, but I'm leading to the four based off a of melody. I'm going from the root down to the, um, the dominant seven, back to the root, the two, four, then I hit that uh, three, and then the dominant one on the left hand, so to the four. So I know those were um, a lot of movements on the five, but I hope that um, you can use them in your playing from resolving on the five chord to go to the one or for um, on a five, one, four progression. So let's move on to the next scale degree. So we're now in the sixth scale degree. So in this case, B, since we're in the key of D, and this is a very common movement um, that I heard a lot. Um, I first heard it from Mike Burrell and it goes like this. And I'm sure most of you know it, but I just wanna make sure that everyone knows it. So on the left hand, I have the B, the E, and the um, A. On the right hand, I have the F sharp, and then I'm rolling the B to the C sharp. So remember, roll the B to the C sharp. And then to resolve it, I bring the E to the E flat and the C sharp back down to the C. So all together. And this is based off of this passing chord that you see a lot. So if you didn't want to do the movement and just the chord, the chord is B, uh, E flat, A, C, E flat, F sharp, and A. So this movement is based off of the six passing to go to the two. And you can learn these movements on the three to also go to the six minor. So it's basically just the movement to go to minor. Another way to do this, um, Corey Henry did the same movement, but he did it differently. He broke it up a little bit more. Um, and his version goes like this. Again. So what we have first is the six um, outlined. So we have the left, um, the B, and then the octave of that, the B. And then we're gonna hit this first. So we have the C sharp, and then we have the E twanging to that F sharp. So, and what I'm doing is I'm outlining this B first, and then I hit the lower B, and then I'm hitting this, so the C sharp to the F sharp. And then I'm hitting the left and I'm hitting the E and the A. And then together at the same time, I'm hitting the E flat, A, C, and F. So to explain the movement a little bit more, this is the motion that I'm doing. I'm going right, left, right, left, together. So I go right, left, right, left, together. And all together it sounds takes me to the two. The next one um, is by Corey and Henry, and he does it a little differently as well. He's emphasizing this, the, um, that minor six. And he starts off with this chord. So we're still on the six to go to the two. Um, he also does that, that same concept of doing the octave first, and then 
in the lower um, octave. And then he hits the chord in the middle, which is, it's gonna be the A flat, the A and the B, and then you have the C sharp and the E. So you have, you have this chord. And then, still over the B, we're gonna do, on the left hand, we're gonna do the E flat, the A and the D. On the right hand, we're gonna do the E flat, we're twinging the G to the A, and we have the C on top. And we resolve that whole movement to the G and the B. So, resolve to the G and the B. And you still keep all this. So all together it sounds to the two. The next one um, that I'm going to show you, um, it's a walk-up. And this walk-up is also by Corey Henry. And he does this outlining the sixth scale, the sixth dominant, the dominant to go to the two. And on the left hand, he's just walking up the scale. So B, C sharp, E flat, E, F sharp, G sharp, and um, an A. On the right hand, he's doing these voicings. He has a G, A, and D. And he's just moving this um, as he moves the left hand. So whole step, same voicing, whole step, same voicing, half step, same voicing, whole step, whole step, half step. So he uses the same chord, same voicing throughout the movement. Once he lands on that dominant, he goes to the two. And he's kind of doing that rhythm. He going, he's going... And I'm going to show one more thing on the sixth because it's very important. So we were doing this as our sixth passing to go to the two. Um, another voicing that I heard Bart Orr do and I heard Mike Burrell do um, is this one actually. And Bart Orr, when I first heard him Bart Orr do it, he did it in the song I Surrender All. And this is very important to know. And this is this chord, and I'll explain the chord in a bit, is based off of the six alternate. So this chord that we first uh, that we first saw is based off of the um, half whole diminished scale. So this one is based off of, which is also very important to know. And then you have the alternate, which is based off of this scale, the alternate scale. So this is just another way to uh, pass to a minor chord. So I'm going to kind of try to put all of them in context. Um, and we'll, we'll just use that song, I Surrender All, um, since that's where I heard Bart use that chord. So the traditional way, or the, the most common way, I should say, is... So it's that six passing to go to the two. But if you wanted to do that movement by Mike Burrell, or if you wanted to do it by Corey Henry, or the other chord by Corey Henry, or if you just wanted to do the chord, So those are different ways to use those movements. So I hope that you can apply these passing chords and these passing movements to your playing. Um, so let's move on to the next scale degree. So now we're on the seventh scale degree. So in this case, C sharp, since we're in the key of D. And I don't really do a lot of movements on the seven besides just going to the one. So in this um, scale degree, what I'm gonna actually focus, it, focus on is the seven, three, six progression. Um, besides the normal 7, 3, 6, there's alternate ways that you can do this. 
This first one is based off of Corey Henry, um, and he went like this. And that sounds a lot fuller. And basically what I'm doing on the seven, the C sharp, I'm doing the G, B, E flat, and the G flat. And then I'm going to that same alternate chord that I mentioned on the six, but I'm doing it on the third scale degree. So I have the F sharp, the E, the G, B flat, C, D, and F sharp. And I go to the six, which I'm just doing a, a minor seven. So B, D, F sharp, the A, and I'm going to the C sharp, and I have the E. So again, The next movement is by David Jackson, and he goes. Again. So basically, on the right hand, he's walking the E flat minor down to the E minor. So you're just walking chromatically to the two minor. And then he's um, going from, from the F sharp minor to the G minor. So then you have to the six. And then I'm gonna show you one last one, which is a two hand voicing. So over the, um, let's actually start on the one on this one. So on the one, we're gonna do this, seven, six so these are just alternate chords you can do um, if you have a bass player so we're gonna go ahead and do the one which I have the F sharp the A C sharp E I have the um, F sharp I'm twinging the B to the C sharp and then the F sharp and if you want you can add that um, a flat just to kind of give it more color on the seven I'm going to this chord which is an F a B D and on the right hand I'm doing E a flat B C sharp and E over the seven then for the three so over the three the F sharp I have E, um, B flat, D, E, G, um, B flat, C, and E. So if you notice from the seven, I'm basically just bringing um, them down. So it's kind of like I'm resolving. And then I'm going to the six which I have the D, A, and C sharp, and then on the right hand I have F sharp, B to the C sharp, and then E. And you can use this in a lot of, a lot of songs, like for example, How Great Is Our God? So if we, instead of just going to, um, you could do like, Example. We can even replace that one. Just um, to give an example for that one. Um, we can do like, when I think about the Lord. So those are just different ways to use it. So you can just replace um, those voicings if you have a bass player. So um, I hope these movements help. I'm just gonna finish off with one last concept um, because I don't want you to miss this one. So going back to that alternate chord on the three or on the six to get to your minor, um, another way to get to the minor instead of doing a diminished chord is by doing minor chords. So if we're on the three and we're gonna emphasize this alternate chord, 
basically what you're going to do is you're going to go to the minor chord of that skill degree. So where F sharp, we want to do the F sharp minor. Or if we're in B, we want to do the B minor. And that's going to be your starting point in the second inversion. So again, if we're in the three, which is F sharp, we do the minor chord and it'll be in the second inversion. If we go to the six, which is B, we do the B minor and the second inversion. And that's your starting point. And you're gonna walk that up chromatically three times and then you resolve to your minor. So it should sound like this. Or on the six. And this is a very um, good way to get to that minor chord instead of just doing a diminished chord. And I really wanted to explain that because on the seven, three, six progressions, um, or from the six to the two, um, sometimes we do a lot of diminished to get to that minor chord. So just to kind of switch it up and to get to that alternate, you can do, or, my bad. So that's just another way to do it. So I hope um, this helps, um, and we'll go ahead and see you in the next video. So we went through all the scale degrees and we learned movements for each one. And I know it's a lot of information. So again, don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions or reach out to Aaron Barbosa if you didn't understand something that was taught in this lesson. Now we're gonna move on to some advanced movements. So I'll see you guys in the next video.